Hey folks, what's up? It's Juno. Why do we try to communicate with people on their level? What is it about wanting to be understood that makes us try to adopt the behaviours of people around us? On the screen today I've written PR, Public Relations, and I suspect PR <clears throat> has a lot to answer for in the 21st century. The idea that when you market, when you go ahead and you want to communicate with somebody, you need to presuppose a, a bunch of conditions exist and that when you communicate with them, you're going to make the right displays to give you inherent authority to be communicating what you're communicating. This could be things like in-group preference signals. So the idea that you're part of the in-group, you're not a member of an out-group, you can relate to an individual on the group status. <clears throat> it could be uh, an air of superiority that you're someone to be trusted because you just know better, because you have the facts. You, because you're an authority, you're allowed to speak the way you, you do. There's a whole bunch of things that you can look at in this, but my, the whole reason I'm even considering this particular topic is that in a discussion I had recently, someone was looking at a system of ethics that they wanted to contrive from the, the ground up in a way of understanding why solutions are constructed in the way they are, and then having that complete systems view, being able to go forward and propagate that to other people, hopefully with the, the, the means of it being beneficial for all people involved. <clears throat> So I suppose I can't really comment too much on, on perhaps what his ideals were that he was setting out in this, but we did come to the point in the discussion where there was the notion that for some reason, if you were going to communicate these new these new ethical principles to somebody, they had to, it had to be communicated in a way that was palatable for somebody else to actually digest, for them to integrate into their own systems of think, think thought. <clears throat> now. I've always unconsciously realised that that was the case. To some degree, I've always been aware that who I'm speaking to requires me to tailor and calibrate my communication to them so that it'll be best received. And I'm aware of a few of the techniques I use. I'm probably unaware of some of the techniques I use or, or not thinking about them when I use them, even if perhaps ostensibly I know of them and I know their existence and their impact. However, what I found fascinating about this discussion was after I gave it some more thought, because originally the person who was, it was there was a few of us, and the person who was doing the asking didn't ask me directly, he asked somebody else. But somebody else actually put some resistance up to the notion that you should be making things palatable for somebody else. And I thought that was really interesting. I'd never considered that before, that actually there is no onus on you to try to make things palatable for other people and while I'm not sure it was expressed at the time, my thoughts after this discussion have been on why could that be? And one of the things I've certainly settled on, and I do apologise if it was said at the time, I just didn't um, compute it correctly and I'm now regurgitating it as my own, but I believe this is my own view, is that this could be the case if their palate is what's at fault. And for me this is quite a, an interesting new perspective on the issue. It's not necessarily that the concepts of the problem, it's the context in which they're being absorbed. That that's the issue, and that you should have issue with the context. And in fact, let the concepts be secondary to it. So, by, uh, by adjusting your speech to fit somebody's palate, to be more palatable, you are validating that their palate is correct, and that is the behaviour you shouldn't be taking. There cannot be infinite palates. You cannot merely tailor your language for everybody to understand because by doing so you, you lose something in the in the inherent message itself you're actually diluting the message by having to compromise on it to get it across and I've known of this function in religious texts I'm aware that there are a number of religions that that uh, argue that the, the texts themselves should never be translated because they lose an element of the truth or divinity in the text 
by translating it to something else, because it can never be translated accurately, or something along those lines. Like, the, the deity chose this language to speak in, or to be communicated to, because it had the right properties. And so I'm aware that this, this phenomenon to some degree exists in religion, but I'd never considered it for, for any other kind of philosophy, philosophical endeavour or thought exercise that actually had to be done in a specific language, or that it couldn't be taken out of the context of, of other things to be translated. You, you could only address it in... it required you to have a mindset to be addressed correctly. And I can see the logic in that to some degree, because your context does matter to describe certain phenomenon, uh, it's, it, especially if they're integrated into a systems view. That seems to be quite clear. If you're arguing for something to somebody who, who has no notion of some, of some concept existing, and then you begin to try to introduce a concept into their worldview without necessarily preparing them in any way to accept it, then more than likely, you know, they, they probably will reject it to some degree. Even if they can accept its existence, they may never get a full view of what is entailed in the, in the thing in itself. I, I apologise, I am waffling a little bit here, but I thought it was a very interesting remark to say that, you know, you, maybe you shouldn't be adjusting your language to fit somebody else's palette, and maybe that's intrinsically the, the error that's being made. So the reason I wrote PR on the screen here is because actually this is a function of daily life for most people in the Western world that when they are spoken to, they are spoken to in a way that sucks up to their current view or the most likely held view. To some degree they're being flattered on the beliefs they, they probably hold um, and then that's being reinforced in a way and that's consciously done in marketing. Like they, There is a conscious effort to do that in marketing so that they will try to somewhat flatter you or somewhat um, corroborate your current narrative but then add their own whatever it is they're selling into it as complementary. It does match and it does fit in that regard. There is never an effort in marketing to try and change whatever paradigm you're in. It's always to suit the current dominant paradigm that's already present and add on to it and I think that's fascinating and I think that's possibly got a lot to do with the generation of the culture that we're currently living in now perhaps being so resolute and immovable in their view often is because this is the way that they have been spoken to by the vast majority of communications aimed at them which are almost all based in in finance or economy like it's, it's for the purpose of selling something they're constantly being spoken to and they're always being spoken to with the def with the definition of like a predefined appeal like a, a a mass appeal so that it doesn't constrict their their view in any way or force it into a funnel to be viewed specifically from from one perspective they're trying to do this 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 catch-all dragnet scheme by just being as inclusive language as possible um and not and not disregard anything unless it's so far outside of the group that it's it's easy to disregard, or it counteracts the the um, or it counteracts the general narrative of being inclusive. So, because it would be sort of tautological for it to do that in a way, like it would be maybe that's not the right term, like self-contradictory for it to try to be all appealing and then not denigrate anything that isn't all appealing. Like if if it was all appealing by appealing to people who, who aren't all, all appealing, that would be ridiculous. So it has to maintain at least its internal logic. And to do that, it can't be seen to being exclusionary on any basis. And so, again, this is why I think this is so interesting. This concept of not adjusting to, to the sensibilities of another or to their worldview to make your explanation. And I suppose it's like saying, well, how are you going to explain excuse me, how are you going to explain um, that the world is round to somebody who believes the world is flat only using flat earth terminology? How would you do that? You would have to break the paradigm that they have and their perspective to make the explanation that you need to make. 
And, and I think that maybe that's why it's so difficult for people to, to find a way to communicate with flat earthers, because they simply don't have the language available that they would normally see themselves using in that scenario that is accommodating to their palate. They don't know how to do that. So they just speak in the way that accommodates to them. And so there is actually no communication going on. They just talk past each other and get increasingly frustrated. All right. That was my observation. I'd appreciate any feedback. Uh, I actually think this subject could go way bigger than it is. It could have way more implications than I've even factored in here. I'm sure I'll think of some later and maybe like not even add them, but hopefully come up in another video. But thanks very much for your time. Have a great day.